the interior part, it's an antitrapid region. So an antitrapid region, it's what I would call white hole. I think one's got to be careful about such theories. Are white holes real or just mathematical fantasies? Carlo, you're up first. The white hole hypothesis is, is a possible story which is completely irreversible, is always time irreversible at each stage of its evolution, is completely time irreversible, it's completely dissipative, entropy goes up at every stage, but at every stage something happens. Um, and in particular, the black hole, it can only happen when the black hole has uh, uh, gone at the end of its Hawking evaporation. So if we don't believe Hawking evaporation, it doesn't happen. But if there's Hawking evaporation, at some point, the horizon is very small. Okay, entropy has gone up. At that point, with entropy going up, a lot of entropy, a lot of uh, information out with uh, with the Hawking radiation, that there can be this bounce. So you get an object which is very, very different than the original object, completely different. It's a teeny, teeny object which is stabilized by quantum gravity, which can still emit radiation, can still dissipate. Okay, entropy keep going up and slowly dissipate. So there's a much longer process than the simple black hole bouncing and, and, and coming out, where the second law of thermodynamics is respected at every stage. That what they put, well, that's what the black hole is, a, a white hole hypothesis is. The point is that when a black hole becomes small, the area goes down, 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 but if it is quantized, as loop quantum gravity predicts, you have a gap between zero and the minimal one. And the thing is going to sit there for long because inside is very large. So we have a quantum gravity prediction of, of an object at the Planck mass. Carlo, to me, has turned the story completely upside down. You see, what he's calling a black hole is not what we have been calling a black hole. You see, a black hole, to me, I mean, a white hole, to me, that terminology would have meant the time reverse of a black hole. Now, Carlo is now saying not at all. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that when you have this Hawking evaporation, which I agree should be happening very late in the universe, um, when the uni as I say, when the temperature of the uh, background temperature of the universe gets smaller than even these huge black holes that we expect in the late universe, uh, it takes a long, long time, something like 10 to the power 100 years. And at that stage, the black holes start to evaporate away. They get smaller. Now that apparently, I hadn't known this before, it's what Carlo is calling a white hole. Now that's not the picture that I think that either I or Lisa were saying m minutes ago. We, we have the picture terminology, which I would have thought applied, would have been a white hole it was the time reverse of a black hole. That's not what Carlo was saying. He's saying something completely different. Name yeah. Carlo, are you saying something completely different? Yeah, Roger is right. That's what I've said. I mean, it's, it's a white hole is, uh, has to be taken. The interior of this thing is, uh, it, it, I mean, at the end of the evaporation, you can choose a foliation that maximizes the volume. Uh, and then you can say that uh, when the, in this foliation, there's a well-defined notion of volume, interior volume, uh, sort of uh, covariantly defined, and when the, the 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 black hole shrinks, the interior is still large. It's still large, sort of very long tube, so to say, that foliation. Uh, it's very large volume. So the the quantum transition that we compute with loop quantum gravity is into a geometry in which the the throat is very very small, and so the Planckian, the the interior part. Uh, it's an antitrapid region. So an antitrapid region, it's what I would call white hole. I mean, often uh, you may have ideas which simplify the way of looking at it, the mathematical way you like, look at it or something like that, which may not be directly um, observational. It may just be helpful to understand the picture mm -hmm. as a whole. So I don't think making you know, obs observational predictions is an absolute criterion and that we shouldn't look at the theory which really doesn't make any such predictions. But on the other hand, I think one's got to be careful about such theories. Um, there are a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid a lot of, lot of so-called science is, is... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.